This video series was made possible by Eric Schaefer Guitars, Luther's Mercantile International, and Stumac. Welcome back to the shop, friends. In the last few episodes, we built the guitar mold and guitar back. Today, we are continuing progress on the acoustic guitar, and I'll show you how I completed the soundboard. That's the top part of the guitar sound box. I'm also going to show you my first major mistake and a mistake that I'll likely have to live with. Let's get going. The soundboard is constructed from Sitka Spruce book match boards. As with the guitar back, I used my joining board to joint the edges before gluing them together. The spruce was much softer and easier to joint with my plane and was not nearly as prone to tear out as the Indian rosewood. This wood is really a joy to work with. This is my first time working with this material and my understanding is Sitka spruce trees grow in Alaska and the western coast of Canada. They make excellent guitar tops. Once the boards were glued together, the joint was nearly impossible to see with the naked eye. With my magnifiers, I was able to mark the center line and prepare the piece for bracing, constructing the rosette, and cutting the sound hole. My design for the rosette, which is the decorative area around the sound hole, is to use scrap Indian rosewood from the back and sides and then wrap that area in a black, white, black laminate fiber purfling. To cut out the Indian rosewood ring, I use Eric's rosette cutting jig. You can find those on his website if you would like to purchase one. I'll link that in the description. The jig has a center pin and a clamp to hold everything in position. The jig is designed to work with the Stumac circle cutting jig and the Dremel tool. I'm also using a tiny spiral down cut bit to minimize the risk for tear out. Once I had the rosette material prepared, I drilled a center hole in the position for my rosette. I drilled into the scrap piece of plywood behind the sound hole to hold the guide pin. I used the same Stumac jig to route out the channel for the inlaid rosette. The channel is only about two millimeters deep. The key is for the rosette to be inlaid into the soundboard just deep enough that I will not sand through it during finishing. Once the channel was cut, I cleaned everything up with a chisel and 80 grit sandpaper. Now for my mistake. The rosette fit perfectly in the channel during my dry runoff camera. The problem is, after I applied glue to the channel, it caused the spruce fibers to swell just enough to make the rosette very difficult, if not impossible, to press into place. In the video, you can see my struggle to get the rosette to seal properly. I did the best I could with the glue rapidly drying. I then sanded everything flush to the soundboard with my drum sander. The bad news is I sanded through the rosette in the left upper area at about 10 o'clock. Unfortunately, this is a result of the rosette not seating completely in the channel. I'll definitely learn from this mistake. After the rosette was complete, I used the same jig to cut out the sound hole in the soundboard. Now to the bracing. The braces are constructed from spruce. The main bracing structure is called the X brace. The X brace has a lap joint at the center of the soundboard. To cut that joint, I used my small back saw to cut the curves in various files to fine tune the joint. This brace is the main support structure of the soundboard. The soundboard is radius similar to the guitar back. The soundboard has a 40 foot radius and in comparison to the back it has a 15 foot radius. 
In simple terms, the soundboard is flatter than the back. The braces for radius using a piece of sandpaper adhere to the radius dish. The 80 grit sandpaper makes the process very fast. Once the X braces were glued to the soundboard, I turned my attention to the accessory braces and also the bridge support plate. I used the GoBar deck to glue all the pieces to the soundboard. The brace layout is beyond the scope of this short video. If you want to learn more, I highly recommend taking Eric's online build course. Link is in the description. Before completing the soundboard bracing, I prepared an access hole and channel for the truss rod. More on that in an upcoming video. Similar to the guitar back, I tapered the braces and sanded everything smooth. Next time, we're steam bending the guitar sides and gluing together the sound box. Look forward to seeing you then.